disproportionately. So you need to smash people to win delegates off them. So it'll be hard, but let's, there's a debate coming up in a few days' time. If Joe Biden falls apart, like some people suspect he could, <laughs> then yeah. it's always a chance, then, yeah, Bernie Sanders could be right back in. Uh, all right, but you've still got, you've got another couple of primaries coming up uh, in the next week, uh, one key state being Florida, the expectation being that that will be a very strong state yes. for Joe Biden. Yeah, look, if, if, if Joe Biden doesn't do something terribly wrong, he is going to go well ahead in the next two weeks. There are, there are it's Florida, Illinois, Ohio, Arizona and Georgia are the next four states. They are four of Joe Biden's best states. So he could go, he could be 400 delegates ahead in two weeks' time if things don't go wrong for him. Yes. That's an if. <laughs> so do you think Bernie Sanders will drop out and when will we know? It would be insane of him to drop out before the debate because that's yeah. his best chance. I would, I would say in three weeks we might have that conversation again because Bernie Sanders has gone on the record and said, if I can't get more delegates than Joe Biden, I am going to drop out. If he's 400 delegates behind, it becomes almost impossible. But that is if, if, if. For now, he definitely shouldn't drop out now. Has the party base recognised that Joe Biden is their best chance in beating Donald Trump? I think they've recognised that, that Joe Biden is their best chance where Bernie Sanders is the other option. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if they had their 25 million candidates that they had six months ago again if they didn't choose someone else. I don't think they have they have convinced themselves that Joe Biden is as bulletproof as they'd like, but uh, he will do for now, I suspect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have a caveat on that, don't you? Because you, you're saying, you know, it depends how he performs in the debates. Yeah. He is prone to a gaffe, isn't he? He is, he is. Look, the fact is that Joe Biden is not the candidate that he was four years ago or eight years ago. He's just not. I'm not saying that... They, like that, there are people spreading scuttlebutt about dementia and so forth. That's that is ridiculous. Yeah, there are people who are saying he's senile. Yeah, yeah, that is ridiculous. He is definitely not senile or dementia. But what he is is slower off the take than he used to be. What he is is less verbally dexterous, and he wasn't very verbally dexterous to begin with. So it just means that in a debate situation or off the cuff, he just screws up every sentence. There's always a stuff up, so and it makes it hard for him to get momentum. Having said that. He's still, got a, he's still got an empathy touch. When you look, when you look at the polls, there's a, there's, a, there's a statistic I always look for. Does he care about people like me? Joe Biden always gets in the 60s in that statistic. Well, see, he's years. not perfect. It's a touch of the common man, isn't it? Yeah, he, a, absolutely is the case. And he's, he's, got, he's got a very honest, raw story that he likes to tell, and people relate to it. He's, he's had a lot of troubles in his life, and he understands what people are going through. And if you're America and you're about to go through what they are probably about to go through with coronavirus, someone like Joe Biden is well positioned to have empathy for these people. And so there are definite pluses with Joe Biden for all the negatives. And you can see more of Chaz along with John Barron on Planet America tonight at a quarter past ten local time on ABC TV and on Friday at 8pm Eastern Daylight Time here on the News Channel. Tasmania has just confirmed two con has just two confirmed infections, but coronavirus hit the state hard today with the cancellation of Dark Mofo. Organisers were worried about the financial risks of being forced into a last-minute shutdown of the Winter Arts Festival. It is a massive blow to the tourism industry. The state government is now trying to come up with something to fill the void. What opponents have wanted to do for years, coronavirus has achieved in a matter of days. Just two weeks from releasing its program, one of Tasmania's biggest tourism draw cards, Dark Mofo, has been called off. We're pretty devastated about the fact that nine months of work uh, is now amounted to very little. The festival's creator is worried it might leave him exposed. We're killing Dark Mofo for the year. I know that will murder an already massacred tourism environment, but I feel like I have no choice. The government and Mona are each on the hook for $2 million to run Dark Mofo. What's worse, if we ran Dark and nobody came, I'd lose $5 million or more. That's not something that we can afford this year and would put um, Mona itself in jeopardy in terms of operating. Locals are processing the news. Well, I always do the nude swim. Patty has never done the nude swim. So we are. But what can you do? It's a bit sad, but it's probably the right thing to do. I agree. Because we don't want David Walsh losing money. <laughs> <laughs> 
businesses who rely heavily on tourism are bracing for a tough winter ahead, already impacted by coronavirus. We've seen a downturn in turnover, probably around 10% at this stage. Um, unfortunately, I think it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. We're still seeing really strong numbers on our planes and on the, the ships coming into the state, but when you have that kind of major stimulus event removed, and, and obviously a lot of people who would be planning for a busy June to finish their financial year out, um, obviously when you lose that, there's nothing to replace Dark Mofo. Dark Mofo is the first and only major event to be cancelled in Tasmania so far. The Festival of Voices will still go ahead, as will performances in the Spiegel tent. But the loss of millions of dollars in economic activity provided by Dark Mofo will be felt, and the government is starting to think about a solution. We'll also speak with uh, regional councils as well, work closely with Mona with a view to being able to provide uh, a first class event, certainly not to the scale that uh, we've come to expect, but something that will fill the void. Dark Mofo will go ahead as planned in 2021. Alexandra Alvaro, ABC News. So Andrew, that's big news with Dark Mofo being cancelled for 2020. There have been other events in the art scene that have been cancelled and or postponed. Russell Brand was supposed to have a show in Perth this week. He cancelled that. Uh, Miley Cyrus pulled out of a bushfire relief concert in Victoria that was supposed to go ahead and then they just cancelled the whole event mm. after she withdrew. I know you were excited to see Katy Perry <laughs> in Bright in northeast Victoria for another bushfire relief concert. So that one did go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah that's right. That went ahead today. Yes. Um, so, but you're seeing as time goes on, more and more has been cancelled certainly overseas and in Australia. Yeah. Also in Victoria though, the, the, perhaps in other states. Yeah, the, the big one that's happened overseas is the postponement of the Coachella Music Festival. Now this is a festival, do you know about it? Yes. Okay, but tell, tell me, me anyway. <laughs> tell me what you know, Andrew. No, no, I'll let the pictures do the explaining here. So this is a music festival that takes place over two weekends. Every April, about 200,000 people turn up uh, for the music festival, about 150 acts. This year, the headliners were Rage Against the Machine, Travis Scott, Frank Ocean. So this is now being postponed for six months from now. So two weekends in October, it will take place. Everyone who has tickets will get to keep their tickets, but the acts may not be the same because of course October is different to April. Mm. Now all the cool young beautiful people turn up to this including a whole bunch of influencers um, who love to show off their pics on Instagram of their time at Coachella because it's basically out in the desert so it kind of um, makes for a cool pictures. There's lots of fun things organised as you can see from those. Do you want to run us through Andrew, some of the responses to Coachella it's pretty big, isn't it? Being Look at that. postponed. Um, some of the amusing responses. Some of the amusing responses. I can't yeah. read that. Well, the, this is the face you make when you hear <laughs> Coachella is postponed until oh, come October. On. Get over it. <laughs> With the little uh, sunflowering hat. <laughs> I love that. Uh, coronavirus coming for Coachella after getting. Uh, South by Southwest cancelled. That's another huge yes, music another industry festival. event right. in Austin that's been cancelled. Then we can keep going. This is Frank after helping engineer the coronavirus so he doesn't have to perform at Coachella. That's in reference you to You know, Karina, as much as I the... am a fan of Coachella, uh, I was more disappointed that the Indian Wells tennis tournament, which is just <laughs> up the road, was, was cancelled also. It's probably more your demographic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, three Formula One Speaking team members, sport. and let's be serious now, have yep. been isolated in Melbourne with suspected coronavirus just days ahead of the Australian Grand Prix. So Reuters is reporting two members of the Haas team and one from McLaren have been tested and quarantined as a precaution, with test results expected tomorrow. Hundreds of thousands of fans are still expected to attend the event in Melbourne this weekend, despite the latest development. And organisers say extra measures have been put in place to protect their health. With handshakes banned, this is the new Grand Prix greeting. And we promise we won't hug or kiss. Coronavirus has cast a shadow over the start of the Formula One season. Next month's Chinese Grand Prix has been postponed, while Bahrain has banned spectators from attending in less than two weeks. In Melbourne, it's business as usual. I wasn't worried. I, I knew one way or another we would get it going. Um, 
and I'm glad we can make it work with spectators. Obviously, that's that's good for them. What is happening in the world is a tragedy. We have to take precautions. Um, it should be fine here, uh, hopefully. Of particular concern, the arrival of more than 150 staff from Ferrari, whose factory is based in the epicentre of the coronavirus outbreak in northern Italy. Then there's team Alfatori and Pirelli tyre suppliers, also based in Italy. It's as simple as this. The advice from the Chief, Chief Health Officer is that there is no need to cancel that event. What we'll probably be reducing and um, uh, and avoiding is the selfie moments, the autograph stages and the, the hugging and banter that would normally happen at the start of a Grand Prix season. No selfies allowed. Shoeys to be confirmed. Catherine Murphy, ABC News. Melbourne. Okay, just before we go, a quick look at the weather around the capital, uh, around the capitals, I should say, in the country for tomorrow. Uh, we can see it's going to be 26 in Darwin, uh, partly cloudy along the east coast in Brisbane, Sydney.